My name's Garrett, and I'm incredibly nervous to be here. I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's because I'm back on my home turf, the, the place where I grew up here in Utah. And I want you to know I'm very grateful to be here, and I very clearly understand that any single one of you could be up here telling your story, and it's an incredible story. And I'm very grateful that today I get to share you uh, one of mine. So this picture is a picture of a mother humpback whale and her baby calf above her. And then if you look to the right, there's two small humans. The one is me, and on my back is my little girl, Dorothy. Little five-year-old Dorothy. So the story I want to share with you today is the story of the bravest girl in the entire world, a little five-year-old girl named Dorothy. <clears throat> Um, so when Dorothy was six months old, her mother, I'm going to blame this on her mother, her mother had the idea to put her in swim lessons. If you have a six month old, you know they don't do much, right? She, I don't think she could crawl at the time. And we decided, let's see if she could swim. And so we took her to swim lessons in Pleasant Grove. And Jessica and I, I think we were both at the first one. And they would drop her in the water and she would just struggle underwater. And we're on the sidelines, we're just panicked as parents. Like, OK, like, what are you going to do? Like, teach our daughter to swim. This doesn't look like she's swimming. And then they would bring her up, and she would choke, and she would cough up water. She would take a few breaths, and then they would drop her again. And you're waiting for the happy ending of the story. But no, it, just, it was that bad, the whole lesson, <laughs> OK? So we take poor Dorothy home, and I have a picture of her in the car seat, just like, stink face, like, my parents suck. <laughs> and the second lesson, they told us, like, usually they get it after the first lesson, we'll try it the second lesson, she'll for sure get it. So Jessica stayed home, she couldn't handle it, it was very emotional for her, so I took my daughter to waterboarding, I mean, swim lessons, <laughs> and same thing, we put her in the water, and I mean, props to Dorothy, they blame this on the amount of fight that was in Dorothy, because this is how baby swim lessons work, okay? So a baby's body will actually float. If they lay flat and they don't move, it'll float. If a baby's struggling and trying to swim, that motion will make them sink. And so the idea is, put the baby in, they'll struggle, they'll struggle, let them take a breath, drop them in, they'll struggle, they'll struggle. Eventually they'll get so exhausted, they'll give up, and to their surprise they'll float, but the baby's brain is smart enough to realize, oh, that's how I float. That's how I survive. The next time on their own, they'll float. Not Dorothy. She's got fight for days. And it was our third lesson, and she was still just fighting. And they would put her under, and her face would be purple, and she would be fighting and fighting. And I'm just there on the sidelines feeling like a terrible father. And she, I mean, no happy ending to that story. She never got it, OK, guys? <laughs> I took my daughter home, six-month-old Dorothy, could not swim, OK? So um, it was about that time, <clears throat> let's see, it would have been about a, a year later that we decided as a family, we're going to sell all of our belongings and go for an adventure around the world. By raise of hands, has anyone heard of the Bucket List family? Um, by raise of hands, has anyone uh, gone snorkeling in the ocean? OK, by raise of hands, has anyone touched a humpback whale? Sweet. Let me tell you what it's like. OK. Um, so we, we decided we're going to sell all of our belongings. We're going to leave Utah, and we're going to go for a little bit of an adventure. We thought it would be four months, and we just got addicted to the adventure, got addicted to the quality time together and creating memories as family. And what was supposed to be four months ended up being three years. That adventure started in Tonga, and it ended just, what, two weeks ago in Tonga. Um, August 15th was our start date and our finish date for three years. And one of our first stops was in Thailand. And I just remember Thailand because it's when I took Dorothy to the pool and I was like, do you want to like go swim? And I mean, she had been so scarred from those swim lessons that for her, swimming was like, I'll put my ankles in at the steps. And after a few days, I'm like, why don't you try to like hold your breath and go under? And I have video of her, like if this is the surface, she would put her nose, like the very tip of her nose under and then like bring her face up and be like, okay, I did it, I'm done. And like that's how scared she was of the water. And we didn't blame her, like we waterboarded her, it was our fault, <laughs> okay? So poor Dorothy, just terrified of the water. 
But I mean, most of the countries we visited were either like a tropical island, somewhere water-based, or it was a place uh, with a swimming pool. And so we were spending a lot of time in the water. We got to the Bahamas and we were in this gift shop and she found a toy that she wanted. It was a treasure chest with these cool little toy jewels that would sink. And we came up with a game where um, we would set these jewels on each level of this step. And the first one, easy, she could just grab it. The second one, she kind of had to like reach down in the water, but her head would still be barely above the surface. And then the last three, she would have to hold her breath and go get the jewels. But she was only going to get ice cream that night if she could get each of the jewels. And brave Dorothy overcame that fear of putting her head under the water. It had been about a year and a half since her waterboarding experience. She put her head underwater, she held her breath, and she grabbed the last jewel at the deepest step. And I mean, from that point on, I think that's when she kind of broke past that barrier of, of overcoming that fear and going underwater. And then from there, she just took off. It was the next country that she was putting her hand underwater and swimming and touched the bottom of the pool. And then she was doing the same thing in the ocean. And now I get to flash forward about two years later to the end of our journey when we returned to Tonga to swim with whales. So if anyone was planning a trip to, tr to swim with whales, it's really difficult. There's not a lot of countries where it's legal to swim with whales. There's not a lot of places where you can like, safely get in the water with whales. It's a very unique time of year, a very unique place, and mostly based off water conditions, it is nothing for weak swimmers to do, let alone kids. For sure not kids, and if you're not a, an adult that's like a good swimmer, Probably not the experience for you. Um, but I mean, Dorothy is no regular human. She's super brave. And so after a few days on a boat out in Tonga swimming with these whales, I asked the captain, a local Tongan, I said, so my little girl, I would love to bring her on the boat. And he's like, I mean, if the weather's not too bad, we could maybe bring her on the boat. And I was like, OK, and I want to get in the water. She kind of like slipped it in there, you know, hoping he wouldn't hear. <laughs> um, and so the next day when we get on the boat and she's got her swimsuit on, she has her own little snorkel mask, he's like, oh, that's cute. Like, is she going to snorkel during lunchtime? I was like, I'm going to put her in the water with these whales. And um, I don't know, Tongans are cool, <laughs> super, super cool. And he's just like, you're, you're the dad. And he, he said, he's like, um, she'll be the youngest person to ever come on the, on the whale boat until Manila came on and then till Callahan came on. For, so for a little bit, Dorothy had that record. But she would for sure be the youngest in a water with a humpback whale. And none of that, like, is, all of this is a unique experience. Tonga's a unique experience. Humpback whale's a unique experience. Her being the youngest, that's really cool and unique and remarkable. But for me, this story is just about trust. And it's about bravery. It's about the bravery of a little girl and me being the lucky dad that gets to raise her and instill that trust in her so that we could experience this special moment. So the play-by-play -play is we take this boat out into the open sea. It was a pretty rough day. The boat's rocking. Sometimes you can see land. Sometimes you can't. We're on the top of the boat looking for either a whale that's slapping in the water or a blow, a spout from a whale, any sign we can see to find a whale. It had been a few hours. You don't know where these whales are. You're just searching for them in the open sea. And finally, we see the blow of a massive humpback whale. Okay? Right after we see the massive one, we see a little spout, which means that is a mother and a calf. You can't see them. From the surface, they look big. The spout's big. But you don't know, what's, you know, you don't know the iceberg that's below the surface until you get in that water. So I had been preparing Dorothy those bedtime stories the night before I said, this is how it's going to work. We're going to see this. When it's time, we got to get in the water quickly, but calmly, OK? I'm going to put on my mask. Then I'm going to put on your mask. You're going to hop on my back. We're going to slip into the water. It's rough water, so just hold on to my back and focus on breathing. And once we get to the whales, I'll take you off my back, and you can see the whale, OK? I thought she would be scared. If not in the boat, I thought she would be scared once we got in the water. Not brave Dorothy. I said, OK, it's time. Mask, spit in my mask. She spits in her little mask, OK? She hops on my back like a brave little girl. And we hop in the water, OK? And we're just swimming. We're swimming. 
I may have gone too far in how much bravery I taught her because she kept coming off my back and I'd grab her and say, stay on my back till we get to the whale. And she'd kick off me, stay on my back. I mean, we're in the open ocean, the deep blue sea. If you were to look straight down, you see nothing, just deep, deep blue. There's fish down there, there's sharks down there, maybe more whales down there, but you can see nothing. At least for me, it's terrifying. Now, Dorothy, she's holding onto my back and we're in pursuit of this whale. And then just the magical moment when the whale starts to come into our vision, you see this massive humpback whale the size of an airplane. You see the baby calf on its nose because the mother's lifting it up so it can take breaths. Just a brand new baby, less than a week old. And I hear a shriek, <laughs> sorry. I hear a shriek come out of the snorkel of my little girl. And I think she's scared, so I hurry and look at her, and I just see her eyes so big, filling up her mask, and the biggest smile. And as soon as she sees it, she kicks off me and just starts swimming to it. And I'm waiting to see how the mother reacts, because if I swim close to the mother, I'll be like, no, I'm protecting my baby, see ya, and they'll swim off. I think it was down with little Dorothy, you know, coming and swimming close to them, swimming around them. And to my astonishment, Dorothy was just as brave as could be. So we spent just, I mean, it seemed like forever. It was maybe about 20 minutes with this mother and this baby calf, swimming with it. Um, and then when they started to swim off, I went and I gathered Dorothy and I put her on my back. And I said, I was like, do you want to duck dive with me? Do you want to deep dive? And when we come up to the surface for one second, I'm like, do you want to deep dive? And she's like, yeah. I said, okay, when I tell you, you take a deep breath. So we start swimming, we start swimming, we kind of get into a good position, come up for one second, and all I say is, hold your breath. And I, just, I can remember um, so clearly her little voice, just so much bravery in it, just being like, okay. I hear her take a little breath, and we deep dive. I'm so grateful, I didn't know it, but I'm so grateful that my friend was in this incredible position right behind, perfectly symmetrical with the mother, and he snapped this picture. I didn't know it, and so I deep dive, I'm down, and me and Dorothy, uh, she, we have this thing where if, if we're deep diving when we were just snorkeling without humpback wells, if she squeezed my shoulder, that meant I got to come up for air so that she wouldn't have to swim up on her own. So I deep dive, and it felt like a long time. It got to the point where I was like waiting for her to squeeze or anything, and she probably just you know got distracted looking at this massive well, and uh, I never felt the squeeze. And so finally it was me that like ran out of breath and chickened out. I swim to the surface, and we just you know share this the most special moment of my life. And it wasn't until I got back into the boat and the photographer is like oh, look at this incredible picture I got. And as soon as they showed it to me, I just broke down. I didn't know he had taken the picture. And to me, if I were to try to explain it, it wasn't just like, oh, wow, we were in the water with a humpback whale. For me, it went all the way back to being a terrible parent when she was six months old, taking her swim lessons, working so long with her. And for me, I don't feel like it's the credit to me. I just get to be the lucky dad that got to witness it and experience it. To me, the credit is to her to overcome the fear and become so brave and confident that she can now swim with humpback whales. And really, I'm, you know, this gives me the confidence as her parent that she can have the bravery and confidence to take on whatever comes next in her life. So, <laughs> just to finish, um, I just want to echo the words of the, the great speakers that were on the stage before me, that it, th this is a grand experience, but it was the, the small moment that made it special. And no one, like Jimmy Rex said, no one had to give us permission to make this experience happen. No one gave us permission to sell our house and travel the world. No one gave permission to Dorothy to overcome her fear and be this brave. It was a decision that we made as a family, a decision that Dorothy made on her own, and this was the magical experience that came. So I, I, I hope that you felt the same thing I felt listening to these past speakers, and every time I look at this picture, that. Life is a beautiful thing, and all you got to do is just be a little brave. Thanks.